Hi, I'm Matt McQuinley. In the last 30 years, I've set up businesses from scratch on three different continents. One was a factory that exported to 26 countries successfully within four years. One grew from zero to 13 locations around Australia within three years with no outside funding or loans. It expanded only by reinvesting profits. Another grew from zero to 31 locations in a little over two years. In the short amount of time we have together, I'd like to share with you just a few of the keys to a successful startup. Number one, passion. This is what gets you out of bed and keeps driving you when things are tough. This is also what attracts and retains people. Before I make the next point, I'd like to point out that Van Gogh only sold two paintings before his death. Gauguin and Monet were virtually unknown and unappreciated until after their deaths. Authors and poets like Edgar Allan Poe, John Keats, Herman Melville, H.P. Lovecraft, Henry David Thoreau, and Emily Dickinson all were unknown or at best virtually unknown until after their deaths as well. So the second point is that the timing has to be right for your product or service. The next quick point is your product or service has to solve a problem for people who can afford it. People say competition is great, but we as business owners know that's not true. Competition is bad for business. So point four is that your product needs to have an unfair advantage over your competition. The next point is that preparation and planning is key. Thousands of years ago, in the art of war, the great Chinese warrior philosopher Sun Tzu said, the side that will win is the side that is already won, meaning success is decided by preparation. Point six, be smart enough to know how dumb you are. Warren Buffett reads one book a week Richard Branson, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, as well as the CEOs of Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Ford, Target, Pepsi, and DreamWorks, as well as the president of the World Bank, all utilize a coach. So unless you think you're smarter than Bill Clinton, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and the CEOs of the huge corporations that I just mentioned, focus on getting mentors, advisors, and self-improvement. The last point I'd like to share with you is what Dr. Alan Loy McGinnis called the repeater tendency. Another way to think about this is having the ability to build on small successes. Or you can think of it as thinking big while starting small. For example, Jeff Bezos started Amazon by selling books online out of his garage. There's another story about how Bill Gates was walking along the beach with his then girlfriend while Microsoft was just starting out. And he said something like, I see how I can get to 100 million with Microsoft, but I'm really upset because I just don't know how I could get it to a billion. But perhaps the best example of a, having a repeater tendency is Betty Nesmith, who also, interestingly enough, was the mother of Michael Nesmith of the Monkees. Long before he became famous, she was a housewife in 1950. And she had a problem. She was a secretary and she wasn't that great of a typist. And before she became a secretary and a single mother, she was a freelance artist. And what artists do when they make a mistake while painting is they just paint over the mistake. So Betty thought to herself, man, it'd be great if I could do that at work. So she approached her son's high school chemistry teacher, and together they concocted a fluid that they called mistake out, where Betty could actually just paint over her mistakes. It would dry, and she could continue typing instead of having to retype the entire document again. Remember, there weren't computers back then, really, on people's desktops. They just used old-fashioned typewriters. Her friends in the office saw her using this fluid and said, hey, that's great, give me some. 
So she gave some to her friends. And her friends started pushing her. Man, this is great. You should sell it. So her kitchen sink became her first manufacturing facility. She made a whole bunch of bottles of what she called mistake out. And she went around to stores in the area and said, hey, I've got this new product. You can have it for free. You can sell it for whatever you want. You just have to promise you put it by the cash register. I'll come back in a week or two. You tell me how it goes. And then we could talk about me being your ongoing supplier. Well, what she found was mistake out was a big hit. And it grew and it grew and it grew until she sold it in 1980 to Gillette for $47 million. And the most successful people are often like Betty Nesmith. They lead relatively normal lives until some small success occurs, and then they build on that success and build on it and build on it, and then they accomplish things that other people might think are impossible. Of course, we didn't cover everything needed to have a successful startup, nor did we go into much depth on the keys presented. But hopefully, I gave you some things to think about. If you'd like to hear more, you can contact me on LinkedIn, email, Facebook, text, or on my website, greennightcoaching.com.au.